What's up guys, I'm Just Chaos, and I wanted to make this video because I was scrolling through TikTok and I do follow the Jubilee account. Um, I do find a lot of their videos very interesting. I like to watch the debates. Um, I myself like to argue a lot. And I was very curious about one clip that I saw because I saw a clip from this video that we're about to go over about a certain form of punishment that parents utilize that I have been the receiver of. And I just wanted to kind of go through it and talk about, you know, what I think about it, but also kind of take into account what a lot of these parents are saying about this form of punishment, because it's a very controversial kind of topic, especially with my generation, Gen Z, and the younger millennials coming up and starting to reach that adulthood as we start thinking about how we want to raise our children and how we want to portray ourselves in the world as parents and as adults. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. Um... Spanking your child is an acceptable form of punishment. So spanking child, a lot of people have been, you know, spanked as a child, uh, especially Gen Z, uh, millennials more so, boomers even more so. And it just gets, it gets more and more aggressive as you go back into the past. And as you kind of take a step back and realize that, you realize that it comes from a background of quite literally beating your child. Um, it's just like, it's a lot of aggression that you realize that this more toned down form of punishment comes from. But at the same time, it's a toned down form of punishment. It's not you know, as extreme as it used to be, which is how a lot of parents justify it. What? I don't want to get involved of course, at all. Of course, the one. Do we have to? The, we don't have to the, do it at all. Yeah, the, I, I don't even want to stand dad. back here. No, okay. <laughs> well, we don't have to. You guys don't have to participate in the conversation whatsoever. But is it going to show our position, like standing back or sitting? Yeah, we do see you guys. So <laughs> they're so uncomfortable with this. It's kind of funny, um, acting like they don't want to participate in it, which is it's interesting. It's like they're, they're trying to shift the focus to them. I feel like it's because it probably can make makes them uncomfortable talk about this in the background but we just want to hear his perspective then people can walk forward but if you don't want to participate in the conversation whatsoever you don't have to well yeah so i'm kind of saddened that nobody else walked forward because not only do i think it's an acceptable form of punishment but i think it's one of the best okay so here's where a lot of people uh would probably come at him and attack him some parents see that as the best way. Some children do respond quite well to it. Other children do not. Um, this is not a commentary on his style of parenting or how good he does as a parent. Honestly, he, this guy, Hal, doesn't seem like a very aggressive kind of person. Um, it may just be what ended up working with his parenting style. And the reason is, is because it's effective, it's quick, it's over, it's done, and the kid can go off and play again and not have to sit in a corner or languish so, in a room a or something like that. And it's not about getting angry, I'm mad, I'm gonna whack my kid. No, it's about, okay, you made him, you did something you weren't supposed to do and you're going to get spanked for this. All right, so that's his justification. It does make sense. Um, he does explain it quite logically. At the same time, you have, like he doesn't seem to take into account the fact that it's borderline assault. Like it's it's borderline abuse in a lot of situations. So it's kind of hard to see his perspective, especially for someone like me who it's like, in my opinion, you know, I have different ideas of it. You know, it's it is what it is. But let's let's I guess hear from anyone else. So I'm gonna ask any of my disagreeers who wish to step forward to talk about this, please do. If you wish not to step forward, you don't have to. The specific anecdote I have is um, for my child is one time, like, you know, as a, ch as a parent, you can lose your patience and that happens. That's true. We would just kind of like slap him on the hand when he did something like, don't do that, don't do that. And I remember one time he did something and he started to become more self-aware and he started hitting himself on the hand and hitting himself. And I was like, I, I can't do this. Is, I can't, I, we can't go down this path with him. This is 
Okay, so this personal anecdote um, is a good example of what could happen, but at the same time, that kind of self harm, it doesn't necessarily mean that like the slapping on the hand led to the self harm. I mean, it's a it's a response. I mean, younger children, it's 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 gonna be more likely for them to respond that way because they think that oh, if I do it to myself, I'll get it over with. I used to have that same concept, um, which is why I told on myself a lot. It's like, well, if I told on myself and I punish myself, it's going to be less likely that I have to receive some kind of spanking uh, and such from, you know, from the person that was doing it. So I understand where he's coming from. Uh, I feel like this antidote, anecdote is a little bit targeted, though. That's that's yeah. this is not going to work for at least specifically for him. And I think it's a case by case basis too. Like you know, you've led your kids in a way that hopefully it doesn't See, lash out yeah. into the real world. And I should have let them finish. react like that to someone else either. And I just feel like that's my responsibility. So yeah, and you know, I hear that op opponents to spanking will say, "I don't want my child to be violent." Yeah. You know, I have five kids, ten and under, and I, the exact opposite. Oh my God, is this man a Mormon? So it's true. Because do you what, think it's what, a bad memory for them? What's that? Do you think you know, that they're going to have memories of? these times being spanked and that it will be sure and something i think they'll be that thankful they... for it i would do because i i, talk, I mean i, know, I would I be lying if i said i never have spanked my child of okay. course we but i don't ever i don't don't feel good about it yeah. don't you want to raise your child to not want to do things because they feel as if they'll be a better person not because they're going to be punished for yeah. it okay so here's where she brings up a good point and spanking is it's kind of a psychological thing. It's it's a literally a physical harm to you. So over time, that spanking it creates a response. It's a, it's like a trauma response. So every time you do something bad, you start thinking over time. The more it happens, like I'm gonna get hurt for this. This is gonna cause pain. And your brain does one of two things. It either likes the pain, which leads to some weird kinks, or it creates a response that says, Oh well, I don't like this i don't want to get hurt so i'm not going to do it and she brings up a good point that it's like they're going to have that memory they're going to have that kind of uh response to it and maybe uh as the the first one said i didn't catch the name the yellow jacket they uh brought up that maybe they'll push it towards someone else and the the first guy how he does bring up the fact that you know, he does understand that that might cause violent, to, like people fear that it might cause violent tendencies towards other children. But how can you guarantee that? You can't guarantee that there's going to be any kind of violence or any kind of harm that that child is going to put towards someone else. At the same time, you can't guarantee that they won't. That's where this kind of argument, it's kind of, it's hard to gauge because a lot of times when people think spanking, they think belts, they think hairbrushes, but in this situation they could mean just hand uh just you know something less extreme and especially with uh millennials raising gen z's and gen alpha i think is the next one we have this perspective of uh spanking being attributed with belts and harmful objects like the boomers use towards the millennials while the millennials take it a step down where they won't use they won't always use harmful objects a lot of times they'll just use their hand a lot of times it's just you know one one and done you know it's it's kind of this is it okay to take the punishment and lower it while at the same time still laying a hand on your child yeah, both See, this is hard for me to understand because I come from a culture where everyone, like all my friends have loving parents that spanked them as kids. And now they've grown that, up that's, to be great, that's where the issue becomes. well-functional adults who respect their parents and are glad their parents spanked them. Okay, I'm just going to say my, my view. Mm -hmm. So I don't spank my child, one, because of child slavery. Oh, their name is Christian, which is ironic because the Christians greatly, like a, the Catholic Church especially, supports this. Okay, let me let me replay this. I'll say my my view. Mm -hmm. So, I don't spank my child one because of child slavery. <laughs> okay, I paused it. I'm gonna see where this goes. And Jim Crow. 
Okay, it, it got worse. Mm -hmm. I'm a black person and I live in a world where black people are beaten all the time. I have a mother who spanked me. I do, I'm not glad that I was spanked. Mm -hmm. I respect her, but I'm not happy about that. Also the same thing with the people who are like, I was spanked, I came out great. They usually have like anger issues, they're violent, they whoop their own kids, they probably need therapy. Okay, well here, here let, me, let me poke some holes in your argument here, like I've been trying to do to everyone else. Um, just because they were spanked doesn't mean that that causes their anger issues, doesn't mean that that causes their violence. I know plenty of people who weren't spanked as a child and are very violent, are very aggressive kind of people. I went to high school with them. A lot of them ended up in bad situations. On top of this, I understand her argument about race. I, I, I get it. I've, I see it on the news every day. I've seen it happen to my friends. You know, I, I don't live in a really bad area, but I've seen it happen. I'm, I'm observing it from a distance, um, and I can't ever understand that experience. However, spanking a child is not a race-related argument. You can you can understand it through a racial lens, but it's not a race-related argument. What we're discussing is, is spanking your child at all in any case? Okay. And I feel like she's taking it a step in a different direction. Because if you look, we have one Asian person, we have two white people, and we have one, Af one person of the African-American community. It's not a racial thing. Every single one of these people have said so far that spanking, like they've been spanked, or if someone in their family has been spanked or spanked them, and that they spanked their children. It's not a racial argument. And I understand that can be your defense for not wanting to spank your child, but instead of targeting it towards a racial thing, try to take it in perspective of a greater idea. So think about the severity of it rather than the racial aspect of it, or think about the context of it uh, that excludes the racial aspect because it, it makes it harder to connect that argument to someone who is not of that race, who doesn't understand that. Um, because there are white people who do that to their children. It was done to me. There are Asian people, I'm sure, who, like, I, I've had Asian friends who, say they have things thrown at them rather than being spanked. I mean, I, I, I'm not saying she can't talk about her race. I'm just saying it might be a stronger argument if she didn't use that as her basis to start. So well, that, that, that's my thing. I, I, I feel like her argument is very strong. The racial thing is just going to turn these people off because they're not going to understand it. They're not going to connect with it better. Usually they don't even realize how emotionally fucked up they are. Well, you gotta understand, <laughs> parenting is more than just I spank or I don't spank. If you're a terrible parent and you think that spanking is gonna fix your kid, you're wrong. Okay, um, so that that's the end of the section that I wanted to talk about. Um, real quick, I just kinda wanna recap. So, he proved, he, he ended it with a good point. If you're a terrible parent and you think spanking is gonna help your kid, then you're wrong. And that's 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 very true because you can have incredibly good parents. Like you could be the best parents in the world and spank your kid and your kid is going to turn out amazing. And then you can be a completely shitty, horrible, terrible parent and spank your kids thinking it's going to work and they're going to end up locked up in jail. They're going to be those aggressors, those abusers. I saw it happen. It like, I didn't like, I saw the effect of it. It happened to me for years. I was like targeted by someone who was who was in that situation where they had terrible parents and their parents thought that hitting them was going to be a good idea and in effect he chose to hit the like the children that were under him and this wasn't my biological parent this was someone who was a like completely unrelated to me and just happened to be a sort of step parent in my life for years so no one quite understands it um until they've been the victim of something more extreme and then seen the different levels of it that can happen uh, through their siblings. I'm the oldest of seven, so I've seen the different steps, the different levels of how this can be taken. And I've seen the effects of good parenting and bad parenting through high school and through like through middle school too. So to sum up everything at the end of the day, 
uh, spanking your child is a matter of opinion in a lot of cases. And you have to be a good parent in order for it to be effective in any case on top of that. If you're a bad parent, if you grow up in a bad situation and you choose to lay your hands on your child in that way, it is probably going to cause more effects. And especially if you are a person of color, I I do agree with her that if you're a person of color and you grow up in that kind of community that with that kind of history, it's probably going to have a larger impact and a larger effect on that child's mental health and their mental well-being in the future. So um, that being said, I am going to give those of you who don't want to hear my opinion as a straight white male, um, I'm going to give you all a chance to click away and get off of this video, uh, especially if what I've said has angered you. So that was your opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and speak my piece. My opinion on this, you should not spank your child. You should not lay a hand on your child. Unless you feel it is the absolute right thing to do. Not if you feel it's necessary. Necessity does not justify abuse or laying your hand on a child, especially your own. Just because it makes you feel worse than it makes them feel doesn't justify it. If you feel like spanking your child or slapping their hands, slapping their mouth, etc. is the best way to parent them and you feel like it is what needs to be done because you have gotten the best response from them out of that, explain it to them. Do not just do it and walk away because then that child thinks that that pain is you hating them, you dislike them, they don't understand it. When they understand, when you explain to them and they understand this pain is being caused to me because I did something wrong, because this is what works, because this is, you have to explain it to them. You cannot do it unjustifiably. That is what causes a lot of mistrust. That is what causes so much anger in the children that are the result of this, that are the victims of this. And you have to do it without malice. By doing it in malice, you are no longer punishing your child. You are abusing them. You are laying your hands on them to vent your frustrations and to hurt them in some way. And it, that is going to be very bad. <laughs> that is grounds for calling CPS. That is grounds for having your child taken away from you. Because despite the fact that you laid your hands on them, you know that you love them. You know that they are the best thing in your life. And unfortunately, some people aren't like that. Some people don't think that that's the best thing in their life. Some people don't feel like uh, their children are an extension of them. They would rather see their children as, you know, burdens or something to be gotten rid of. And if you feel that way about your kids or your parents have felt that way about you, I feel sorry for those children and I feel sorry for you. Because unfortunately, there are a lot of people in this world that do see their children as a burden uh, more than a blessing and more than an extension of themselves. Those people who had you had the choice. They have the options nowadays in the 21st century to not have you. And the fact that they chose to have you means that some part of them wanted you. And even though they may hurt you and they may be bad people, you have to understand that there is still a part of them that wants you. That is not a reason to forgive them, but it is a reason to try and take a step back and understand the perspective of your abusers. But only if they're your parents. If they're if the, your abusers are your significant other, get out of there. Um, I am going to include at the end of this a clip with the suicide prevention hotline and a few other hotlines and they will also be in the description that I think might help anyone who sees this um, but at the end of the day please do what's best for yourself and please do what you think is best for your children I am not experienced as a parent uh, but I am experienced as someone who is a victim of abuse someone who is a victim of a lot of dangerous situations and someone who is the oldest of seven uh, siblings, including one non-binary, uh, three girls, and one, two younger brothers. 
So I have a perspective, I have an understanding of this, and this concept does take me at heart to a degree. So for those of you that stuck around, for those of you that watched this, I very much appreciate it. And I hope those of you that can feel the same way I do about this can understand it and do seek the help and do reach out to those that you feel you need to reach out to in order to help you and in order to help them and in order to help the next generation coming after us because we decide the future for them. They can make their future when they're adults, but until then, we decided we're in control. We are the ones that are taking over, the ones that are going to set the stage and set the standard for so many to come and for the next 50, 60 years. We are the future, and our children are what comes next.